What is going on everybody? Welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. My name is Bruno and last night Jessica Milagros and Peter Brown and myself we sat down and broke down the BB25 cast. We kind of just had a nice little conversation about it. Nothing was really planned. We kind of just talked uh, and that's what you're going to see here today in the following video. Make sure you hit the like button. Leave a comment below. Let me know who you're cheering for, who you're excited to see. Do you know anybody from this cast? What you're hoping to see for the season? What kind of twist? What kind of games? What kind of decor? All that kind of stuff. Let me know in the comments below make sure you hit that notification bell so you know every time we put out a video i will be breaking down every single week with other bb alum uh, throughout the season i will be streaming these episodes live on kick i'll put the link below make sure you check it out you can watch it together with the community a lot of big brother fans alum we watch it together we watch every single episode together break it down together as it's going down so make sure you check out kick twitch all that fun stuff that being said let's get to it okay so i think we're good is p better now good okay uh, okay, I want to talk. Let's just chat. So first of all, I want to say, Pete, man, it's good to chat with you. Can you put yeah, that buddy. a little bit? Oh, Just Jess is. Bit? Jess is. Sorry, I'm fixing my light. Okay, Jess. No, let us know when you're ready. You know, no big deal, man. We're just gonna wait for Jess. Because it's like. Lights are always. Yeah, you gotta let it. You, let us. You know what, chat? Don't worry. We're just gonna find the lighting. We're just gonna wait for Jess to be ready, chat. Don't worry. Just. Uh, yeah, Jess... I just need the light. That... Not, I mean, not lower. I meant like the the temp. Just like the, whatever, like low. Better. Yeah. Whenever you're ready, Jess. We're you know we're just. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You know. Okay. Just could... lighting situation. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so, what do you guys think of the cast? What do you guys think? Like, talk. Let's talk about it. What do you think? Who wants to go? Pete, what do you think? Who do you like? I really. Yeah, I uh, I really uh, quite like this cast. I did not expect to have such a positive reaction to a new group of American house guests, but uh, they seem like they could be fun. Uh, I think there are a, a lot of them are in for a very rude awakening. Yeah. If they're not in there already, uh, I think it's going to be a very overwhelming experience walking in with some of the personalities. They're all, they're young. Like I mean, there's four people who are 25 mm -hmm. um, in the house. So I mean, the average age is skewed a little bit because Felicia's in her 60s. But like, it feels like it's a very new school Big Brother. Uh, but I think the personalities are fun and. The only thing that I'm a little concerned about is I don't know where the clashes are going to come from. Mm. Uh, that, but that's usually, a, you know, you kind of find that out as it happens. Yeah. They all seem like relatively nice, you know, uh, easy to get along with people. But the house, as we all know, does things to you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I, I'm glad you said that, too, because there was one kid. He's 21. That, that The guy that his brother's yeah. on Survivor. That's, that's young, man. That's too young. Yeah. I'm telling you, that's too young. I, he, uh, that's too he young. has never lived in a world in which Big Brother didn't exist as a summer show or like right. as a show. Essentially. His entire life, Big Brother has been something. <laughs> like, that's kind of that crazy. My mind. <laughs> yeah, it's young, man. I, I don't know. It's, uh, 21. I, did, I don't young. know. I think that this is a – I feel – a little opposite. I think this is a very old cast mm. in comparison. If you look at, I mean, when you say oh, 21, I mean, Chada had just turned 21, um, Hannah last oh, wow. year. Mm -hmm. um, Mickey won a season at 23. So, like, I was in a house where I was the oldest and I was 38. And mm. Cliff was like the oldest man and he was uh, 50. Mm -hmm. So this is like very nice and refreshing to see three people over the age of 40 and a good amount of 30s and they're and the 20s are kind of capped with the exception of Corey at like a 25 or older. You know, I think the median age is like 32. So 32, I yeah. think, yeah, so I think it, it kind of the diversity factor in terms of age, I think they met. Um, I think it kind of gives me a reminiscence of just uh, like a Big Brother 10. I know a lot of people had have said that before, mm -hmm. but it does because I feel like there's just so many different dynamic people. It's kind of like a clusterfuck of people. You know, yeah. you're just kind of like, who's going to who's going to get along in this house? Mm -hmm. Like, who who's really going to? Well, first of all, with the showmances that they've been promoting in every corner of Big Brother, it's like, who the hell is going to be in a showman's this year? I can't, right. I, I couldn't even think about that, you know, but I think it's refreshing. Do we know who's single and who's not? Do we know? Is that, is that information anywhere? Are a lot of them single? I'm not sure, <laughs> but look, I mean, you go in there, 
unless you're married, basically, you're single. <laughs> yeah. 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 All we know is the stay-at-home dad who, I mean, right. he could be sing- he could be single. Who yeah. knows? He could be. Um, but I think me, me Cole. Uh, no, no, no. One of the the girls, either Nicole or the other girl, um, is married. Mm. I think I think it's Nicole because I think I was just followed by one of her accounts or some or somebody. Yeah, Nicole Hayes. She she's married. I know that. Who um, who are we liking? Who are we liking? Like as a player or a personality? A play like like who? Okay, who are we? Who are we cheering for? Okay, two two questions. Who are we cheering for? Who do we think is going to be the best player? I know it's – it, right now it's so hard. I mean, how do you answer that, right? I mean, they're not in the house. I mean, anything can happen, you know, it, it, of course. But in, in, in theoretically, who do we like? Who do we think is going to play well? On a personal level, who do we like? Who do you think is the best player? Uh, I mean, look, anyone can win Big Brother. For sure. Now, that's, that's not to say that everyone has an equal chance of winning Big Brother, but anyone can win, win Big Brother. There is a win trajectory – for every single one of those mm-hmm. people in there. Now, some of them, if you played it a hundred times, would win ten times. Some of them would win only once. You know, um, I think some people's win trajectories are very difficult, and I think others might be a little more conventional. But as we've seen in the past few years, it's really hard to predict who's going to win based on first impressions. Because mm-hmm. ultimately, what it comes down to, the number one skill in Big Brother is how well can you adapt to your environment with the people who are in there. The most important lesson you can learn when playing Big Brother is that you have to play to your cast. Bruno, you mentioned several times on the stream, breaking them down, like all these people have these very specific plans. And the thing that you find out when you go in there is most of those plans go through the window because you're not gonna be able to find the people that in your head are the ideal Mm -hmm. candidates. And even if they are, maybe they don't get along with you. So it's difficult um, to, to, to figure it out. But I feel like if you're a fundamentally likable person and you're not too, um, and it's not to the point where it's a detriment against you strategically, you're probably going to be okay. So Jag is probably going to be fine. Cameron is probably going to be fine. Mm. <laughs> Several others are probably going to encounter <laughs> difficulties. <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree. And, I, and that's the thing. I always say, like, people always say, oh, if I go in, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. You can't do that. I mean, it just doesn't work that way. And, and a lot of times when you lose, this, like, say you play this game, the thing that buries you, it a lot of times it's not your mistake. It's someone you trusted. They fucked up. Not, o- not only did they right. make a mistake, like, maybe they didn't purposely screw you over, but they did something that, you know, unintentionally screws you over so it's other people's mistakes that can sink your game it happens so it's 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 just the way it goes so you can have this thing planned out in your mind and in this in this make-believe world but once you're in the game playing it i mean we all know it doesn't work that way it's not just like okay a b c d it doesn't work that way it's 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 you know um yeah so so you're liking uh you you said if you said i like jag i definitely like jag i like luke i like felicia i like red i like matt uh, Felicia, I'm really liking. The thing is, who do I think can take it? I think uh, Jag is my is my is my front runner. I would say um, I like him. He seems social. He he talks with his hands a lot. He seems very like welcoming. And the, the the a big you know a big factor in the game is is likability. If people like you, they trust you. Yeah. They tell you things. You know who's working with who. You have that all that information. People aren't going to target you. Um, you know, if someone maybe does say your name and you have enough friends in the house, they might tell you. Um, I like it. But at the same time, you know, when someone's too liked. Uh, they do become a target and people are going to be like, listen, yeah. I don't want to get them out, but when are we going to get them? We have to get rid of them. So there's that like fine balance. I think Jag is going to do well. Can he take it all the way? Uh, I don't know. I-, I think Matt, Matt seems pretty good. Luke, I like him. He reminds me of Arlie and I don't know why. I don't know what it is, man. Oh, really? uh-huh. Yeah, he reminds me of Arlie and I don't I don't get it, man. I don't get it. Uh, but it just, I kept seeing Arlie. Red, I mean, Red seems cool. Uh, I don't know if he can go the distance. Felicia, I mean, I don't see people targeting Felicia. I don't see people targeting Felicia. And I, mean, I, look, see, I see her going far. Here's the thing with Felicia. Obviously, she seems perfectly lovely. The older character usually falls into one of two roles. They either go pre-jury because, conventionally, they go pre-jury because... It, Big Brother tends to be a very youthful mm-hmm. environment. And to Jessica's point, yes, there are certainly a non-insignificant amount of people who are 30 plus, which is great. 
Uh, it's nice to see a, a range of ages. But in there, old habits tend to die hard and people go back to that high school mentality and it's, you know, fun and colorful and people tend to be very clicky and things like that. Nobody wants a mom generally. And Felicia could very easily fall into that like mom kind of category. Like, you know, she says that she's, you know, very like life of the party or something to that effect. But I don't know how much that's going to be true in something that's a 100 day <laughs> slog. Mm -hmm. Like she might get very tired very quickly. And so they either go pre jury because they don't just mix into the group very well, or they end up essentially in the end game because there's no value in evicting them. Mm -hmm. So for Felicia's sake, basically she wants to fall into the latter category because it will extend her life in the game. But older people, unfortunately are a really easy target in the early uh, portion of the game. So I think she might have some difficulty there, but we've seen examples of, you know, the older person go uh, very deep into the game and have game competency like Cliff, uh, which was mentioned earlier. So like, I don't know. I feel like her win trajectory is very low, um, but I'm, I'm sure that, you know, I hope she has a great experience. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was saying. I, I think the older person, these are the, usually the easiest first boot because it's just quick. They don't fit in. Everyone's young and you know, that's how it is. Get them out. Forget it. That way it gives people a chance to draw the lines and figure out where people fall. You get rid of the older cast. Everyone kind of falls into place or yeah, you carry them to the end and then it's an easy win. You know, that's how it is. Jess, what are your thoughts on, on that? What do you think? Of, what do you think of Felicia? What do you think of the cast? Who are you liking? Uh, who are you not liking? Who are you feeling? Who are you not feeling? Let's hear it. Let's hear the tea. Let's see what you got. Spill it. I actually, I like, I like. Don't all you of them, dare really. say everybody. Don't you dare <laughs> say everybody. She loves blue the most. Love yeah. it. Uh, yes, actually, her my number one choice. No, wow. um, no, number I agree. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, I agree. I I agree with Peter. I think. Uh, I, and the thing is, is that we don't know. I mean, we know that this means nothing of like course. they're yeah. the, okay, what yeah. we're seeing right now is mm -hmm. like this is such in in sense a waste of time but we love doing it but you know because we know that once they go inside that house it's going to be a completely different ball game mm -hmm. and and it's only when we see how they vibe that we're going to get a good idea of what's happening now I like, I do genuinely like everybody. There's nobody that, that I'm like, oh my God, get him the F out of this, uh, uh, out of here. Like, he's going to annoy me so bad. I don't think there's anybody like that. There are favorites. I like, I mean, I think, and a lot, a lot of these um, house guests remind me of past house guests. And I don't, I mean, obviously there's always that little, you know, that stereotype. But, um... You know, I think Red is going to give me more of like a like a Donnie, kind of like mm -hmm. an America's favorite type of, you know, type of guy. I feel like he's going to get along with a lot of people. I don't think that there's like a, a there's there's not anybody that's going to be here that's going to be a cool click. I don't I don't see anybody like coming in and be like, OK, we're the cool click. And so now we got to get rid of all of the old people or the whipper because they're, everybody's just it is such a diverse cast, you know, People, there's just so many different characters here. Mm -hmm. um, I do really like Matt, and I think even though he reminds me of a type of Tyler, and I don't want to like like mm -hmm. put him in that category. I think he has what it takes to win because if people don't see and target him off the bat because he's a physical threat, I think that. Um, you know, that he has like this warmth, this warmth to him. He, he might be a jock of some sort, but he's not um, an unlikable right. one. You know, now, I think they all have character. Spe speaking of Matt, I have a couple of questions. One, okay, he's an Olympian. So the mm -hmm. guy's athletic. The guy, what is it? What is it called? Is it called a deaf Olympian? Is that what he said? He calls himself a deaf Olympian. Yeah, like he's that, yeah. A, yeah, he's a deaf Olympian. A deaf Olympian gold medalist. Yeah. So this guy, I mean, he's talented. This guy's an athlete. You know. Now, do you think now? Yeah, again, though, we saw Ryan Lochte on Celebrity Big Brother. <laughs> he was an Olympian. As well. Oh man, that he's guy was. Brother, so. You know, I've I mean, listen. Like, Ryan to me it seems like a real cool guy to hang out with but that guy has sure, no yeah. business 
No right. business being on Traders. No business being on Big Brother. No business. Just let him do his. Just go swim some laps, buddy. You know what I mean? Do what you do best. Right. But this guy here, uh, you know, I, I don't know. We don't know. We don't know yet. But do you think now is he fully deaf or hard of hearing or partially? Like, do we know the extent of it? I don't know. No. Okay. If he, he, even if he's partially, de- I mean, ob- he obviously has some kind of impairment mm-hmm. to the point where he's eligible to um, participate in the uh, like Special Olympics. So, um, if he's hard of hearing, that could actually legitimately create challenges and impediments for right. him in the house because ch- like so much of the game is like um you know talking while trying to appear as though you're not talking so the better ventriloquist you are uh, across like if you're at one side of the backyard and somebody else on the other back uh, other side of the backyard if you're really good at you know masking your tone and and you know not uh opening your lips so much the other people around you are going to have a hard time can, like figuring out, oh, you could just be talking about breakfast instead of like strategy or whatever. Um, and also like, uh, you know, eavesdropping. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, a big part of the game is like, you know, being at the right place at the right time, hearing the right thing at another part of the room. Like if Bruno and I are talking in the kitchen, but I have an ear on the backyard and I can kind of make out what they're saying, you know, you can do like multitasking audio visually is very important to Big Brother. So, they could actually be a legitimate like roadblock for him if hearing is such an an issue that would prevent him from doing all those things that everybody else would be able to do naturally. So uh, I think it'll be interesting to see uh, how that plays out for him. That was that was going to be my next question too. Like, do you think like now we obviously know it's a, it, there's a disadvantage to it, right? And and you nailed it. You said it. Like just being able to eavesdrop on eavesdrop on some conversations. Uh, you know, walking in a room where people, or you walk by a bedroom and you can hear what's going on the other side of the door. They don't even know you're on the other side of that door or the pantry. You're talking, people having a conversation in the pantry and you're on the other side and you can hear things. There's a disadvantage for sure. Uh, I just wanted, I was trying to figure out what, what, how deep would this disadvantage be? How big of a disadvantage? Um, now he says he can read lips. Um, you know, that'd be huge. If, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's the thing. So advantage. there's the advantage on that too. Like someone that could read lips, that could be big too. But a lot of the conversations you have in the house are whispering. It's a lot of whispering. People yeah, aren't yeah, talking yeah. in normal, you know, normal voices like this. It's very, very, very low. So his 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 uh, lip reading has to be pretty good for him to, to keep up in there. Uh, it's interesting because that's the first time this has ever happened. I you know I know a uh, big shout out to uh, Bruno. Um, there's a guy uh, Bruno, a fan of the show. He's he's been trying to get on for years. BB can and he he wanted to be the first deaf. Uh, house guest he's been trying for years and years and years uh and i know for sure he's gonna be cheering for this guy so um yeah it's 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 interesting to see and i want to see how it plays out the lip reading stuff maybe it works for him or or not so uh i want to go back to felicia for a second do you think do you think she's gonna be pre-jury or for i I feel this is this is my take on felicia this is my take i think people are gonna love her I think there's an old enough cast here. You got the the doctor guy that's yelling all the time. I don't know what's wrong with that guy. Uh, he's always yelling. I think he's going to want to work with her. Red's going to want to work with her. I think, uh, you know, I think there's going to be other people in the house that want to build around her. I think she's going to be a centerpiece. Uh, and I, I don't think she's going to be making all the moves and stuff, but I think she's going to be protected by a lot of people. She's going to be a lot of people's numbers. People are going to yeah. trust her. People are going to tell her information. She's, you know... I like her. I think she's gonna go far. I think she's gonna she's gonna bypass that early boot and go far. Uh, I have a lot of high hopes for her. Does she win? I don't know, but I think she goes very, very, very far. What do you guys think about her? Yeah, I, I agree with that. I agree with that a hundred percent. I think that she has uh, the potential to probably be somewhere around like final, like a final five, final six. I think she's gonna play right in the middle. Um, I mean, again, depending on how hard, uh, how hard she plays, I right. mean, no one knows if when she gets in there, if she just starts, uh, to act like a mom and then starts telling people what should be done, you know, and how this, you know, should be ran, or if she's just going to be the person minding her business and pe- people wanting to go to her for the, the, the advice, you know, or the just kind of like a, an ear to talk to or to try to get or to swing a vote. You know, she might she might always be right. the person in charge of who's 
the, you know, the swing vote. So, um, so because of that, I think that if she plays her cards right, she could definitely um, stay in the game longer, especially because there's an older cast. I think there's going to be people who would potentially want to keep her around just for that mother-like figure or because they just they just trust her. She, she looks cool. She doesn't look like she's mm-hmm. going to be, um, you know, someone who's going to be too, dic- you know, dictative. So we will... I guess we just have to see. I thought I thought Tiffany was going to be um, someone who was going to leave kind of early because she was the oldest in the house, and that woman ran the house, and everybody looked at her, you know, as kind of like the the older mother figure, or the you know they they always looked at her for for advice, and I think she played it well, and I kind of have that feeling with Felisa. Yeah, and, and that goes for everybody Felicia. too. You know, it, it it's like it depends on on how they play that's everybody i mean you know it's like we we have this idea we watch these bios this tells us nothing i mean it gives us a little insight into like their lives i guess but they can say and do whatever they want uh in in these bios they can pretend to be something they're not they can you know whatever um speak, what are our thoughts on blue like i i gotta know what do we, what do we think of blue what do you what do you what do you think of blue um i don't know i gotta, I gotta first. yeah all right pete let's hear it bud <laughs> <laughs> uh, she definitely has uh, look if she's one thing that people have to keep in mind as you just alluded to is that in what we've seen so far everyone's playing their casting character mm-hmm. and that's not to say they're not being some version of their self but they're being the biggest version of themselves mm-hmm. okay um, blue looks to me like the most unnatural like there's some people like uh, Luke for example, who's very good at playing the version of themselves that's going to get cast on a show like Big Brother. Corey, similar example. Izzy, actually, also a good example. Mm -hmm. Blue, I feel like as, you know, when you're watching her, she's saying and do she has the mannerisms of like, okay, here we go. Like, I'm so cool. That's big. Production encourages you to be that to be the version of you that they cast when you go in there. So if she does that, and especially if she's coming in as a replacement, she might have the um, self-motivation to be a character. And that can be very off-putting in Big Brother, especially in the early portion of the game. So I think if she get if she can assimilate, she might be fine. But we've only seen this kind of hyper-manufactured quite off-putting version of her so far if she continues to behave like that it's most likely that she would go early if she's actually just a regular normal person who you know enjoys putting on like bravado for the camera um you know from time to time then she might be all right the problem is is that a lot of people and i don't know how well she knows the show but a lot of people when they go into big brother they don't realize that the game and the show are two entirely different things. The show, you see three hours a week. By the time you have breakfast on day two, you've already lived through 30 hours of the show. Um, or in the States, I guess, they, in Canada, we have 30 episodes. So in the States, they have uh, probably 50. So by day three, anyway, the math, whatever, someone else can figure it out. My point is, is that a lot of people do, not only do they do the too hard, too fast thing in terms of gameplay, because they're thinking, okay, the show moves fast. You know, it's all about like big moves and like the competitions and twists and yada, yada, yada. The game in the house is extraordinarily slow Mm -hmm. and it is exhaustively boring at times. And so a lot of people will try to like play up to the cameras and put on this like extravagant show and they're doing it for America or Canada or whatever country they're in. And it's, they burn themselves out very, very yep. quickly. Yep. Blue, I think, of all of the people that I have seen, possibly Izzy as well, but might fall into that category where they're trying to, you know, put on a show and like be a character 24 7. And it's not only exhausting as a player trying to do that, it's exhausting for everybody else around them. And it is the smallest thing can get you evicted in week one. And I think she's probably most susceptible to that kind of, you know, personality, you know, disconnect. 
from the yeah. house. And I and I say that all the time. Actually, I call it like, and no disrespect to Dallas, I think Dallas is a really nice guy. I call it the Dallas Come effect. Dallas, yeah, he's yeah. the life of the party, you know, but you can't maintain that. Like, sure, you can do it for a week, two weeks, three weeks. You burn out. You can't be the life. Yeah. In Big Brother, you just can't be the life of the party for three weeks straight. And that's usually the lifespan of Dallas. It's two, three weeks because that's yeah. when he burns <laughs> out. You know, it's like you burn out. Right. And yeah, when you try to be this, you know, over the top big character, you're going to burn out. I, I, I hope. Yeah. Like, here's the thing. I, I agree. I think she's putting on a show. Um, but it, it's the only one that looked so unauthentic. It was so just, it, you could tell it was a show. It, you could tell she's acting. She's almost looks like she's reading lines. Like it was just bad. Um, does she change what she gets in the house? Maybe, you know, uh, but it, I just, I don't see where she fits in here. I, I see her, if she goes in with an attitude like that, very easy. People are just gonna be like, yo, that's the easy first boot. All it takes is for someone to rub someone the wrong way, uh, night one, night two, whatever it is. And it's an anybody but me mentality, especially week one is an anybody but me. As soon as someone's name comes up, it's so easy for her to be like, yeah, cool. I don't want to be the first to go. It, uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Blue? Blue it is. See you later. You know, no sweat off my back. This is week one. We got, you know, uh, 11, 12, whatever days, weeks left to, to go. So I, I could see her going really early. Either her. I, I think she's one of the ones I could see going super, super, super early. Uh, Jess, what are our thoughts on uh, on Blue? Yeah, I, I see. I see all those sides. I mean, to be fair, we didn't see anything of her. Like, she didn't True. answer absolutely any of these you know any of these questions so we only got little snippets that were just quite horrible really because yeah. <laughs> it just I, I mean because it was just a lot of attitude and it's just like i'm gonna win because yeah. i'm a badass bitch you know mm -hmm. like and that's all you get but it didn't even come off it came off almost like oh maybe she they're trying to portray her as just the mean girl or the villain or you know i don't know it was just a little off-putting i'm hoping i'm wrong because um i feel like this the same thing happened on my season with bella and a lot of people were loving her and were sadly disappointed as soon as she came into the house because the girl knew zero about big brother mm -hmm. and was not doing a good job in with a lot but you know i don't we don't we don't know what what blue like if blue has ever watched the show right we don't know like what's we don't know what's going on with blue blue is just like is she here for <laughs> social media mark. like what is exactly. what's her intentions what yeah. um i mean and i think i i don't know if that's what she's here for i know she has a presence um i know some people that know of her and so it's kind of um I mean, you know, she's one of those like fashion girlies and, but you know, she says she's a strategist, so I'm just crossing my finger. She's not right. my first pick. Actually, she's probably quite down at the bottom, not because I don't like her, but I just don't know enough about her. Right. But I, I wanted to go back with, um, to what um, Peter was saying, because I got the same impressions from Izzy as well, because she was another one that felt like she was trying um, really hard. But when we saw the, um, the questions and she said that she just started watching big brother mm -hmm. in january and watched all 20 24 oh, wow. seasons yeah. like twice i'm thinking this girl has very obsessive like that's that's a, a, a quite obsessive mm -hmm. personality and someone who tends to go too hard too soon and could be completely off-putting to some people you know depending on how well she's able to hide that you yeah, it's a lot of seasons um, to watch. What are we in? Yeah, so in, it's like a few in just January, yeah, in seven lot. months. Or, yeah, and, yeah. And that's twice, you and she said she watched every season twice. <laughs> that's forty-eight a, seasons of Big Brother in like a very short amount of time. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if that was just her. I don't know, but that also means that she's never seen a live feed a day in her life. Right. You know what I mean? So she's going to go in there thinking that Big Brother is one way and and right. and and being completely <laughs> it completely you know changing her mindset. Because this the uh it's likely that this season will involve some whether <laughs> look big brother usa has a tendency to announce a twist and then stop it after three weeks mm. so i don't know what's going to happen with this like flashback time machine thing that they're doing i hope that it's all season long but if izzy just watched all 24 seasons and they're fresh in her mind they're pro 
they're probably more fresh in her mind than in the minds of anybody. Right. Even like, I think Cameron said he was a huge fan of the show. I'm sure there are others that have, yeah. that have seen the totality of Big Brother USA, but they haven't seen them all in <laughs> like this calendar year, which is pretty wild. So like, A, I respect the level of obsession. I think that's great. <laughs> that's a huge check mark. But B, just like you alluded to, if you haven't seen the live feeds and, and you don't have a sense of like, it's really easy to watch it. You know, you can binge watch, you know, 10 episodes a day or something. And, and, and you think that you get a sense of how time works in right. Big Brother and, and you don't. Like, so Izzy, again, might also fall into that, uh, you know, if they are only thinking of how the show works and not how the game works, that can be a disconnect that can get a lot of people into trouble. I always suggest, and for anyone in the chat that's thinking about possibly applying for Big Brother Canada um, this fall, the best thing to do if you're going to apply for Big Brother and you're unfamiliar with the show, which means you're probably un also unfamiliar with the game, is actually not to watch Big Brother USA or Big Brother Canada is to watch Big Brother UK. And the reason why I suggest Big Brother UK, even though the rule structure is technically uh, different, and I use heavy quotations because they don't have an HOH, they don't have a veto, and the public of votes, not the house gets, a, house gets um, uh, evict. I think I just said e-votes, like, uh, <laughs> what's his name did? <laughs> anyway, um, my, uh, but you get one episode a day. And so you really understand how like time works and how like something can happen on Monday Two people can be best friends, but then on Wednesday they hate each other, and and it's a much better indicator of like the constant shifts. Because on the show you're like, oh, it's very clear. Okay, Bruno on HOH, he put me mm -hmm. and Jess on the block. He doesn't like me. I'm going, and that can seem so crystal clear on on the show. But in the house, even if the result ends up being the same, the permutations of it might change a thousand times by the time you get from Thursday to right. Thursday. Right. And so I think mm -hmm. the North American shows do a really bad job and it's not, and it's only because we have less time, but the North American shows, because they focus so much of their attention on the twists and the buffoonery and the uh, competitions, you don't have a lot of time in the modern seasons left for those interpersonal interactions. Big Brother UK is all <laughs> interpersonal interactions. And so if you can wrap your head around I have to win this competition to win this power, or I have to win this competition to save me, or the people in the house vote me out. Crazy concepts. Big Brother UK is going to help you so much more in preparing to play for Big Brother um, than any of the, unless you watch the really early US ones. Um, but yeah, any modern season is is probably a bad way to like learn at the game. You're only going to learn the show. And the show is not the game. Now, speaking of the old seasons, we're on season 25 here. What, what are your thoughts? What do you think they're going to be doing throughout the season? Like, I personally think uh, throughout the whole season, they're going to be throwing old twists. Every week is going to be an old twist. Like a Pandora, I, I think we're going to see Pandora's box this season. That's what I truly believe. Uh, it's 100 days this season. I think Pandora's box is coming in. I think they're going to do all old twists. Every week is going to be like old vetoes, old HOHs, old comps that, you know, are either fan favorites or whatever, staples. I, I think it's going to be a lot of that. We're going to see a lot of the, 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 the decor in the house. It's going to be, you know, old school reminiscent of whatever seasons. I think it's going to be a lot of the, the, the flashbacks and a lot of the, the throwbacks to like the past kind of, uh, you know, thing with that with that episode they aired uh, what last week. It was like the, the anniversary episode. I love that. I thought it was so amazing. It really focused on old school Big Brother. And the only re like I can only think of why would they focus so much on the old school Big Brother? I think it's to get people familiarized with it. So when this season starts, they're going to have a little idea of, okay, this is some old stuff. So uh, what do you guys think they're going to do this season for like twist wise or, you know, just comps and stuff? Do you think they're going to go, uh, you know, every week or, you know, do something from like, you know, season one, two, three, whatever it is. Uh, do you think they're going to do some throwbacks? What do you guys think? Yeah. Jess, let's go I with Jess. I, I think um, I I think they're going to bring in some twists, and I think you you kind of saw it first with this casting twist because there, as much as we might not see it, I think that there is some type of twist, and I don't think it ends there. I think the fact that there's two survivor, a sibling and a mm -hmm. um, and a son. Um, means that something, I think that has to do something with the, either the laser or something that happened because I feel like maybe it got 
crossed some way. So maybe we might see, you know, another survivor player. Maybe I, I, I'm still, I still think that Siri might come into the house. Ooh. I really do. Ooh. And I think that um, when we're Wait, talking so about on. twists. That hugely screw up Jared's game though. If his mom comes in. <laughs> exactly. So I'm thinking, I mean, I don't know how it would work, but there's, but if you look at it, because the the great thing about old school Big Brother were that was that these twists weren't just America's, you know, America's field trip or or America's prankster or <laughs> America's, you know, uh, the, the America's team of like whatever. It was also a twin twist and you know uh, an ex's twist, and it, it kind of mm-hmm. had to do with. Uh, um, you know, casting wise. And, you know, when you, and so I think, I mean, especially when they, you know, when they were talking about the, the siblings that didn't even know that they were siblings, you know, that X factor, you know, where they found out that they were in the house and somehow found out that they were related, you know, stuff like that. That is the stuff that used to make big brother, just yeah. amazing. And so right now we're not seeing anything like, oh my God, they did that to us. So I'm I'm just thinking like really, really out of the box. And if you're gonna bring someone like Siri's son in here, then I'm expecting Siri. I don't know why. It'd give it a hunch, but like I I think either she's there, comes in, maybe plays with him, like maybe uh, maybe she she comes in and he pretends that she's not that they're not related. I don't know how. I don't know what is gonna you, happen. You really want to see Siri in there. You're just yeah. like I don't I care do. how she gets in there. Throw her in there. I don't care. I need to see her in there. I mean, I agree. She's a great. She's great at what she does. You know. Now uh, that's a, gonna be a follow up question. I want to ask you guys. So here's the thing. So 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 Siri is 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 Jared's mom, right? Is that Jared? That's his name. Yeah. Now. I always say like, okay, yes, you can coach, you can help that. That's great. Okay. Now I think a lot of people have high hopes from thinking, okay, this is, this is Suri's son. He's got to be this, you know, genius. He's going to be this great player. You know, I, I have a different take on it. I feel like, yeah, sure. You could get coached by your mom or your brother, your sister, your cousin, your best friend, whatever. It doesn't matter. You can get all the winners of past big brother seasons to coach you all the way up till you go in. Once you go in that house, it's all up to you. Your, your instincts will kick in. Yes. You can have that knowledge, but there's so many things that are out of your control in there. And so now when you get in the house, you have to do what you do. This is you now. There's nobody coaching you anymore. It's good to have that little bit of knowledge to help you get in. Sure. Okay. Little little tips and tricks. Sure. But does that mean this guy's going to go in and be, you know, Sari 2.0? I don't think so. I, I, I don't know. So I hope, I mean, I hope he does well, but I just... You know, it, it, being someone's son to me doesn't doesn't cut it. Like it, it's not, it doesn't mean you're going to go in and tear this place up. You know, it's uh, they're, they're different people. You know, and it's like it's just everything's so different. Age, everything. I mean, look, we've seen a literal season of Big Brother USA in which there were coaches, mm-hmm. and most of them still couldn't figure out how to play Big Brother <laughs> with alumni in the house with them, giving twenty four seven guidance. Okay. So, Bruno, you hit the nail on the head. Look, it is, of course, to someone's advantage to receive guidance from somebody who's been through the reality experience. However, with respect to Survivor, Big Brother is a much different game. Survivor is very fast. Survivor, especially the modern, well, when Sari played, when it was really Survivor, you know, you're, you're getting rid of somebody every two and a half, three days, okay? So in a week, two, up to two people, sometimes more, have left the island, you know, depending on what stage of the game they're in. And Big Brother, you haven't even gotten rid of one person yet. So, again, I, I think Suri is a great survivor player and, and a wonderful person, but I don't know how much genuine advice beyond the bare you know, the most obvious kind of strategy. Like, maybe she can get into the nitty-gritty about, like, how to read people or, you know, like, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, good ways to, uh, uh, you know, uh, make a group or, um, you know, make sure that you're, you're, you're liked or how to assimilate well. Like, like those kind of things I think would be invaluable for sure. 
um, be because they would be relatively universal between Big Brother and, and Survivor. Because so much of the game, especially in the first month, is just like, are you a nice person? Are you a good roommate? Like, most of pre-jury basically comes down to that. Unless you're, you, you know, like you, it like pre-jury, you have to screw up basically to lose. Um, after, uh, you, you know, like, I mean, you could just be on neutral and be fine. Like you, you basically have to collapse to, to, to be evicted pre-jury. So if Sari can impart that kind of just like, Hey, go along to get along, find some friends, you know, uh, don't, don't be too big all the time, but like pick your moments, like that kind of stuff. Sure. But also on the other side, if that's in his head the whole time and he's and he's put the weight on his shoulders, like I got to live up to the mm -hmm. expectations of my mom, who's this survivor superstar, he might do the too hard, too fast thing. Um, so I think it'll be interesting to see how that works out because we've seen siblings and, and, and stuff like that play before. And, and they really do try to, you know, embody the, the idea of the person that they are you know, associated with or related to. So Jared could come into some problems uh, that way, but if he gets along with everybody, then he's going to be on easy street anyway for a month right. because, you know, getting along is, is the most important thing in the early phase of the game. If he doesn't get in his own head, I think he'll probably be fine. Now the speaking of putting the weight on your shoulders, I was talking about this while we were going over the cast Jag. That's a, that's what I want to talk about. A lot of times, you know, people have this, this, you know, it's like they go in, they're representing, Something. He's the first sick um, uh, player in the stage, which is which is kind of wild to me. Like we're 25 seasons in, and he's the first ever to play. And to me, a lot of times when people go in to represent something, they put too much weight on their own shoulders. They put it on themselves, saying, "Hey, listen, I'm representing, or rep I'm representing this community, whatever it is." And I talked about this a little bit earlier, where it's like, you know, I'm representing whatever community, whatever you're representing, it's what you're doing. And it's like they get afraid to make certain moves or do certain things because they're like, you know, I don't want to make my community look bad, or I don't want to, you know, and it changes the game. Now, I think Jag on paper and what I've seen on these, on these videos, this guy is incredible. This guy is, I love what I see. I love what I hear. I, but again, this is just bios, but everything he's saying to me is checking off everything. Boom, boom, boom. It's what I like to hear. What I want to see. This guy's nailing it. The big X factor for me right now is, is he going to get to a point where he's like, I, I won't feel comfortable doing this because I'm afraid it's going to look bad you know, I'm representing this community. I'm the first ever. I, I don't like that. I, I hope I, and I'm hoping for him. It's like, yes, you can represent something, but I want you to still go in and play this game. You know, they're not going to care when you go out. If you backstab someone, if you lied to someone, that's part of what you're signing up for to go. And I hope he, he goes in and does that and, and all that stuff. I, I think this guy's awesome. He's my, he's my favorite. I'm going to say right now. Uh, Jess, what are your thoughts on, on that? And yeah, yes, oh, before, um, sorry, before, and yes, uh, Suri also won Traders. Uh, sorry, yeah, just I don't want to cut you that, off. Yeah, yeah and, and so another thing I was going to say was, uh, so Suri played Traders with Rachel Riley, uh, Cody Calfiori. Uh, was anybody else from, from Big Brother? I don't think so. So um, for all we know, maybe she, and I don't know, I don't know, and I don't want to start a rumor because I really don't know. Maybe she reach, reached out to them and said, hey, listen, my son's going on this season. What can you tell yeah. them? So maybe they're getting some, maybe they, I don't know. I don't want to throw anything out there, but maybe they talked to Rachel Riley. Maybe they talked to Cody and, and then he gave him some tips before he went in. I don't know. Sorry, Jess, I didn't want to cut you off. Uh, so what are your thoughts about, uh, you know, Jag and, and, and being the first to represent? And uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I actually picked him for my, um, for my draft because I knew you were picking him and I don't want you to win. So <laughs> I picked him as a safe, as, as a safe, uh, number three option. So, uh, no, but I really, I really do like him. I think he has a good head on his shoulders. Look, he's a young guy, a lot younger than most of the cast. He's one of the youngest. And um, yet he's an entrepreneur. He owns his own business. He looks like he has a good, very, very good idea of how the game is played. Not too overly confident, not, um, but uh, like there's, there's something about him. He's, um, he has this magnetic personality, but mm -hmm. in a very cool, calm and collective way. I really like that about him. So I do believe him when he says that he's going to take his, you know, his social, that, that social game and not to compare it because obviously we can't just compare every seat guy, you know, right. um, but he reminds me a lot of Hira and Hira was like, 
he I, I honestly think Hero would have won his season had mm-hmm. it not gone to shit with COVID. Like I really liked Hero as yeah. a player. Um, and he has a lot of those qualities. And I don't know if that's um it's just like that cool, calm type of uh, person I think he will get along with a lot of people Mm -hmm. I don't think that he will have to compromise his you know what he's trying to prove I came in there trying you know representing for underrepresented people too you know so I understand not wanting to make yourself look bad especially if you're the first um, in your community to play the game. Um, but I think he also knows what he signed up for. So, and, and I think he said it as well, that he knows that it's just a game and that he's ready to play it. And I really liked his answers. I think he, he I mean, I truly, I, I didn't just pick him to, to piss you off, Bruno. I really do like him. Um, <laughs> I need to know who you picked so I can pick around it. I need to, you know, I need to know. I need to know. <laughs> He's the only one that you're going to find out. Well, oh. obviously, you can see whenever you want. You could just tell Ori to. Yeah. to we're going <laughs> to we're gonna go look at the up. list here. Yeah. But yeah. No, he's, I think he's going to be good. I, I think he's, he's going to be great. He's a top runner for sure. He, yeah. he is definitely on the top. Yeah, I like I liked how he talked. He uses his hands. And like you said, he's just he, you talk to him. Like even just watching his bio, you, you feel that magnetism. That's that's big in the house. If you have that magnetism, usually you can't. Uh, feel that in a bio but like in person i'm sure he has it too where it's like i felt it in the bio he's using his hands when he talks he's just he has like calm cool he, you know he's when he's talking you're listening like those are those are things those are qualities you need and, and he has them uh entrepreneur so the guy you know he's got a good head on his shoulders he knows what it takes uh he's not there for the money obviously i mean i don't know how well his business does but he's a is a realtor they do well usually uh he owns a trucking business i'm sure he's doing well so you know he's not there for the money so you know it's that's like a, a nice because a lot of people they play they want to win that money and it, i mean i'm sure he, he doesn't want i'm sure he'd love to win it too but i don't think he needs it you know so he's there to win the game i, I have a lot of um i think this guy has a, a good chance to win he's definitely one of my my front runners what are your thoughts on jag and and, and i like how you brought up uh, uh hira uh, obviously you know uh, you know they're all everyone's different obviously but yeah i agree i think Hira did really well in his season and i think he would have uh he would have gone very 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 far uh here's the same way very calm cool likable guy um yeah uh, uh, great great guys for sure peter what are your what are your thoughts I like to think that Jag watched uh, Big Brother USA 15 and they saw the moving company and I was like, you know what? I'm inspired. I'm going to make my own <laughs> moving company when I get older. And I that's his Big Brother origin story. Um, yeah, I, I think he's for sure. Like, I, I think after the show, he's probably going to be the guy who most people are friends with. Mm-hmm. Um, he, like, on, like, just he seems like he's most naturally... Um, like he he's obviously one of the most if not the most you know naturally likable people just based on what we've seen however another person who is naturally very likable smart calm cool collected should have been a big great big brother player on paper um you know uh was uh Kaser. and caser has been evicted <laughs> free jury 1200 times and you know look you watch uh you know, um, videos with the guy, like I've, I've never met him personally. Um, but I mean, you watch him on the show or you watch videos of him in real life. And of course, everybody wants to be Kaser's friend. He's the most likable guy in the world, but in big brother, if you're too likable, yeah, you're screwed. And yep. Jag could fall into that category. Like it's possible that they start looking at him in week three and they're like, why does everybody want to talk to him? Mm-hmm. And if like one or two people start to go like, oh yeah, I'm real close with him. Oh, I heard so-and-so was real close with him too. Oh, I heard that so-and-so was also, you know what I mean? And it's like, you start to, you know, if he's in a group, uh, you know, uh, of just likable people and the other side of the house, because like, whether it's the popular kids or the offbeats or whatever the heck you want to call them, there's always a numer- numerical majority in Big Brother, the modern Big Brother anyway. It's how they're basically conditioned to play now. Um, in the older seasons, it used to be like two here, three there, two over here, and it was all these kind of like mini factions. Nowadays, it's 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 much more like uh, you know, and especially if they've seen only recent seasons, uh, they're going to get the idea that it's like Group A versus Group B, and maybe there's a Group C over here. Um, so if 
Jag is in the good group and, you know, they happen to lose one week and it's like, well, we got to get rid of the person that everybody likes. He Mm -hmm. might just be a victim of circumstance in that way. So, again, it's you have to find the line between what is the appropriate amount of being likable in Big Brother. Um, And, you know, I'm sure he's like, obviously, you know, he's uh, used to dealing with all sorts of people. If you're running a business and you're a realtor and the other, like he said that he uh, is a substitute teacher sometimes, and he works with Special Olympics sometimes. So this person is obviously used to being around a wide range of people, which gives me hope that he won't fall into the Kaser trap. But I will say that Kaser, you know, uh, it, it's not something that he did specifically. It was everyone else around him that had the perception of like, well, he's dangerous. He's too likable. He's got to go. So, you know, Jag could do everything right and still go out in week four because he's the nicest guy right. in the room. So, like, yeah. that's what I love about Big Brother is anything can happen. Yeah, and that's the thing. And, and, and we were talking about this earlier. It's like there's a certain likability. If you're, if you're too liked, uh, you become a threat. If you're not liked enough, well, you get sent home. There's that, like, happy medium in the middle where you got to mm-hmm. be friends enough with people but not too much or else he'll be like, hey, listen, we got to get rid of this person. He's just connected everywhere. She's connected everywhere. They got to go. Uh, and there's that happy medium. And once people are saying, yeah, you know what? How are we ever going to get this person out? And then it's just that's how it flips that easy. Usually a double or something like that is usually when you get those people out uh, for sure. Now, I want to talk about Red. Red is one of the most interesting, unique characters i think we've seen in a very very long time and i I like i like it you know like a rupert or uh you know i don't know man like it's just i i like him man and here's the thing there's a couple things i liked about his his bio when when we were listening to it one he doesn't seem delusional you know he says what's his strategy he's like honestly i don't know like i'm gonna find out when i get there and i tell that all the time in the chat uh, I tell him all the time, if you're a future player, you cannot go in and saying week one, I'm going to do this week two. I mean, it does, that's not how big brother works. You cannot have this set plan because you don't know who's in the house. You know, you can go in and say, Oh, I'm going to go in and make a six person Alliance week one. We're going to target the jocks, whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter. It, it, what if these people, six people don't want to work with you? Like it doesn't, what if you're an outcast? What if you're one of two people? There's one person that wants to talk to you in the house. Like, like you can't go in with this preset mind that this is going to happen. Boom, 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 boom. It doesn't work that way. So I like that when people ask, what's your strategy goes honestly man i don't know i gotta see when i get in and and we're gonna see what's there that is the perfect answer he's not delusional i love that he's he's realistic he seems calm he seems likable i didn't like the thing they put on twitter he was like i'm chill billy or whatever the hell what the hell was that man that was so cheese you know but then you you see his bios and you're like okay this is all right you know uh i liked him i like him a lot i don't know how he's gonna do but I really, really, really like this guy. On a personal level, I think he's phenomenal. As a player, I think he has the right idea. It's going to come down to execution. Can he execute it properly? But I think I think he has the right mindset for it. He uh, he does have a family. I think he has kids, he said. I don't know if he's married or not. Um, and I can personally say when I played, I had very young kids. And that was the hardest part for me. Now my kids are older. If I were to go back in, I'm, I, I'm not. like I'm retired from Big Brother. But I'm going to say if I were ever to, to, to do it at the, at the age they are now, I'd be fine. They're, they're, they're older now and you know it's not it wouldn't be as hard but yeah i don't know how old his kids are but yeah being a parent it's tough man when you're away from your kids as you've never been so i don't know if that's gonna weigh on him too there's so many x factors but i like this guy i like him a lot i like him a lot uh what are your thoughts on on our boy red jess what do you think of red i i i agree um i i think that he like i said i compared him to like a donnie you know, like I can see Red being, you know, an America's favorite player. You know, he um, he reminds me a lot of like a cliff. And I say these things because it looks like he can belt out story after story after story after story. And when you're in the big brother house and you have someone that can do that and thoroughly entertain you with their stories and just like have good energy, mm-hmm. I feel like you are less likely to be looked at, you know. Um and I think he has he has some type of it factor. Um I personally I mean I like him. He's he's a uh, he lives in uh in like dolly world so <laughs> near dolly <laughs> near dolly world so you know he has that like he has this type of charisma to him that i really like and and you hit it on the head bruno i think that he's not delusional mm-hmm. there's this there there there's this uh humbleness about him 
that that makes him like relatable and it's just like oh this is a really cool cool right. guy right. a different guy but he's he's really cool the fact that he's that young the fact that he's younger than me it he's just younger feels than me weird i was like wait a minute what you know weird yeah, yeah i was like whoa 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 <laughs> I feel like I'm I'm just sitting down thinking that he's gonna you know tell me about the time he took his grandkids somewhere yeah, or yeah. something. I'm just like you're what? You're yeah, he's younger 30s? than me. He's like Uh-oh. what the hell? Um, that's wild to me. But um, yeah, I I really I really do like him, and I think he has a good head on his shoulders. He knows the game enough, and he knows enough to not call himself a super fan. He knows uh he knows to adapt. He's the one I think he's the only person in all of these uh in all of these bios that actually I think said the word adapt, mm-hmm. right? You know, I think he gets he, it. He, he, he gets it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now on paper he gets it. Again, like everything he said was good. Check mark, check mark, check mark. I love what he said. Again, it's when he goes and he has the right idea, but he goes in, does it all come into play? Does he does he go in and and all of a sudden he starts freaking out or does he go in and yeah. maybe he just shies in a corner, maybe he turtles up, you know, maybe the personalities around him that doesn't, you know, he's not used to seeing, you know, different personalities. He's like, what is that? You know, like anything can happen, you know, but on paper, this guy sounds great. I, I love the personality from what I saw so far. He seems like a really just genuine, nice guy. I uh, love the beard, you know, and that's always, a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a nice breaker, you know, oh, look at your beard, you know, it's, he has something there that breaks the ice. A lot of times you're in the house and, and you might see something, you're like, how am I going to talk to this person? Like, you know, like, w- w- what are we going to, how do we open up, you know? Who was that in season three, Bruno? Who did you fuck across the room? William, <laughs> William, on season three, uh, Kevin and Peely, man, it just, now really? Kevin's like my best buddy, you know? <laughs> crazy yeah season three it was uh uh neha uh, neha and i didn't start off well uh right. kevin and i didn't start like peely and i didn't it was there was a list there was a whole list man yeah. season five was william and dre you know it's like how do you talk to like what, what am i gonna say like you know but yeah so you have that you know for that for like for the for this guy here um what's his name red no, what's his name? Red? Is it Red? Red. Yeah. yeah. Who we're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So I, he, you know, he has the big beard. It's just, it's an icebreaker too. So it's easy to 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 open up that conversation. And I'm sure he's he's used to hearing it, so he knows how to follow up that, you know. And he'll be fine. I think he's gonna do well. What do, what do you think about our our boy Red, uh, Pete? What do you think? Uh, well, I said earlier that he was the love child of McCray and Spencer. They've <laughs> 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 like. like spencer but has the personality of like yeah mccray <laughs> but i love mccray and spencer but like I, I feel like he's the schmush together version of both of them he could definitely be a donnie or he could be a cornbread mm. um we don't know uh i'll speak from experience you can know what to do and say i have to adapt but maybe you're not able to do that Hard. or maybe the certain don't allow you to do that you can know the quote right thing to do mm-hmm. in big brother and it can still be wrong or you might not have the aptitude to do it maybe the other person just doesn't believe you or it's it doesn't like uh, benefit them to believe you you can tell someone the truth you can be point blank lay your heart on the line yep. pour your soul out and the other person across the room if they're the other alliance or you know whatever the circumstance may be they might just go sorry we'll be friends after mm-hmm. and can happen like that red's obviously going to stand out for sure um just optically and so i think it will be um important for him to make those genuine connections early because if standing out can be very bad in big brother you kind of want to just sink into the group as best you can if if someone can find something about you that's like oh like or if they get a sense that like production likes him or you know what i mean like he's always getting called to the diary room why he must be funny or he must be this or he must be that they'll find anything so red i think it, it since he's going to come in and be this wacky over the like he you know he looks like someone um from uh oh the show's name escapes me but like ugh, those like hillbilly guys that were like like beverly God. hillbillies whatever it was it's like not the beverly hillbillies although that's <laughs> appropriate as well uh, what was the name of that stupid show they were like duck something duck oh uh, duck dynasty, duck dynasty. 
Maybe, yeah. Something like that. That was popular, like, I don't know, eight years ago or something like that. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. But, like, I don't know. If production's like, oh, they want a this type of guy kind of thing. Like, you'll frame it in your head like, oh, he's a this or she's a that. And so if Red uh, can just be a person and make genuine connections with people and not be seen as, like, I'm the character guy. Uh, then I think he'll be fine. Um, but yeah, it's like, you know, who is he going to be friends with? Like you look, I, that's always what I do. Like I'm I do the same. The, yeah. The look, Where does he fit yeah. in? Where is he going yeah. to find connective tissue? And ironically, you probably wouldn't think of McCray and Spencer as becoming like lifelong buddies. Mm -hmm. And they do, never know how it's going to work out in Big Brother. Like Bruno, you literally just said, you looked across the room when you got into Big Brother 3, you saw Kevin and Peely were like, who are these you know, I'm not mm -hmm. going to be friends with you guys. We went to their wedding like a few months ago. Yeah, you know, literally. Yep. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it's like you never know. He might find this way to to relate to someone. And, you know, as odd as it sounds like like uh, Jesse said that, you know, he can tell a million stories or whatever. Well, Riley in her bio, she says that she's from Maine, but her thing that she uh, says she currently lives in Nashville, which I don't know how far away that is from Gatlinburg, but, I, you know, it's possible that, if, and she was like, oh, I uh, talk your ear off or whatever it is. So maybe they'll find an odd couple, uh, right. you know, um, you know, friendship or something like that. Like, it's always interesting to try to figure out, like, who's going to be friends with who and how are they going to get along? And I think that might be tricky for Red, but, you know, if he's personable enough, then it won't matter. Yeah, I do the same thing. Every time I look at the cast, it's like, okay, where do these people fit in? Like, how, where is their alliance? Who are they going to be, be friends with? And I see, like, Red, Felicia, maybe that doctor guy, the older guy. I see the older people kind of meshing together. I, I don't know. I don't know if it happens or not, but, like, I see that. The older people kind of stick because there is enough of them now to, to not have the numbers, but to actually make – uh, an impact, maybe make a, a group to have some numbers. Cause usually it's the one older person, everyone else is young and then it's, you know, but at least this way there's three or four of them that are, you know, late thirties, you know, 63, whatever it was, 45, the, the DJ girl. So there's, you know, there's enough of them to like, be like, Hey, we're, we're a little bit of an older cast. You know, why don't we come together? I mean, if it happens, uh, who knows, but I like how you brought up also the, uh, you know, you don't, you don't want to stand out because I'll use a, on season three. I can use a perfect example. Risha, you know, Risha comes down the stairs, tall, beautiful woman. Uh, you know, she comes walking down the stairs, everyone's staring at her. Well, guess what we do night one. We decide who's going to go home. Everyone can only remember Risha. That's the only one everyone remembers because she stood out. So it's about well, Risha, Risha, Risha. And then next, you know, she's on the, uh, on the block and out the door. So yeah, the, I, I like red. I, I really, really, really like red and, uh, and, and I'm excited to see uh, so see what he does. Um, now, I, there's a couple more people I want to talk about. One is Cam and one is Luke. Um, I do have kind of high hopes from Luke. Seems like kind of like, I don't know if he's playing dumb, if he is dumb, if he's smart. Uh, I can't tell, but I like him. Uh, there's something about this guy. I don't know, man. I don't know what it is. And I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion. I like this guy. I think he's going to do really, really well. I think he's going to be sneaky. I think he's going to make friends. I think he's going to pull some strings. Uh, Luke is the guy that reminds me for some reason. I don't know why he reminds me of Arlie. I don't know if it's the body language. I don't know what it is. Uh, but Luke is definitely one of my favorites for some reason. Normally, I don't cheer for this type of, of player. But uh, I don't know, man. What are our thoughts on Luke? I like him. He, he seems sneaky Wait, to you me. Don't cheer, you, don't, you don't cheer for that type of player? What kind of player I don't even know he, what kind of don't... player. That's the thing. I don't even know what he is. I don't know what kind of player gonna, he is. Because I was going to say that it kind of made sense that you liked him because he's like the closest to a jock in that <laughs> <laughs> is he Luke? And, yeah, I would think that he's the close. Yeah, I think that he's one of the closest next to Matt. Like him, them two. Are See, I wouldn't picture him a jock at all. A, I would picture like him a bro, like a. I think that if I mean, there's the crazy thing is, it's there's not a lot of. It's not a broy season. It's not right? a broy season like, at all. I it's thought he was more like quote unquote like a, a, you know nerdy. I guess you want to call it. That's what I thought he was yeah. more like. Like but not jocky at all. But I don't if know. You were, going to say a broy kind of guy he would be the closest to broy that there was aside hmm. from aside from matt but i am like he's more i mean didn't he call himself a himbo yeah uh, i don't know isn't that just like a uh like the male version of a bimbo i think so 
Yeah, it's just yeah. I don't know if that's a broy term. I don't know, but it's like is that a broy jock? I thought that was more of a jock term. Isn't isn't is uh, is isn't like not? a it's like he's like ditzy or something? Isn't what he's trying to? Say? I don't know. I don't know yeah. what he's trying to get with that. It's something along those lines. I don't know. I I like this guy a lot. I think he's. Uh, I think people are gonna overlook him. I hope. I hope uh, either they're gonna overlook him or they're gonna just tag him right away and be like, "Yo, this guy's gotta go." Uh, I like him, man. I like him a lot. Uh, Luke, yeah, he's just, uh, I think he's a lot smarter than people are going to give him credit for. I think he's going to be able to pull some strings. I think he's not going to be afraid to, uh, to, um, to cut people. I think he's going to do okay. I think he's going to be pretty good. I want to know your guys' thoughts on this guy. I don't have much to say on him because I don't know, but I feel, I just, there's something about him. I'm just like, yeah, this guy's got something, man. Either he's going to like completely flop or he's going to be so entertaining. I think he's going to be awesome to watch on the feeds. I think he's going to be awesome to watch on the episodes. I think this guy is going to be on your screen one way. I think his DRs, here's the thing. I don't like the DRs. I don't like modern day DRs. That's one thing I don't like is modern day DRs. I hope they get away from the, the like totally scripted, like the weird sound bites and like all that crap. Like what's that? What's that Pete? Dean Big Brother USA, they're not getting away from that. That's what I mean. Like, I hope they get rid of that. I Oh, man, I hate it so yeah, much, man. Long. So Maybe. I could, I could see him right. having a lot of those, like, little sound bites in the DR. I don't know. What are you guys' thoughts? Let's start. Jess, what are your thoughts on uh, Luke the himbo? Uh, the himbo? What do you think? Um, Not my favorite, but the fact that he's an illustrator, I, I, I would agree with you. I think that he's going to be potentially fun to 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 see on on the feeds and i i say it because illustrators have brilliant imagination you know what i mean and i think that he has the ability if he says he's the best illustrator in the world that he um that he's going to be able to come up with some things on the fly and that might be very entertaining um, to kind of see how he schemes. He's also one of the few that said that they were, well, not one of the few, but he did say he was going to scheme. So it, it did seem like mm -hmm. he had, he was coming in with a lot of intention to kind of, you know, manipulate some things and, and, and kind of pull some wool over people's eyes. So I, I mean, I'm, I'm here, I'm here for it. Whether he's able to do it or not, I, I don't know because I don't know. I don't know a lot of people that would be like, "Oh my gosh, let me go hang out with." Let me go. I, I think he's the sleeper. Luke. I think he's the sleeper this season. The dark. I think he's the. I don't know why, man. I, I could be way wrong. This guy could be like out next week, you know. But there's something about this guy is just pulling me in. It's like cheer for this guy. I, I don't know, man. I like him. And I he like needs him. to keep his glasses on because mm. seriously, the, the pictures that he has in his bio, like his his um. His BB picks don't have his glasses on, and he looks like a completely different bro. Mm. Like he looks, it it's day and night. So, so you, does he look like less like um, threatening? threatening. Like the glasses yeah. definitely have him coming in a lot more on that, you know, kind of nerdy, like intellectual, but like not yeah. too threatening type of thing. Yeah, power yeah. the glasses. You got to play it up. You got to play it up. What about you, Pete? What do you think of our boy? Uh, what's his name? Luke? I forgot his name. I think it's Luke. I think uh, he kind of reminds me of John Luke uh, from Big Brother. Oh, Canada. no. He's I mean, I love John Luke. <laughs> I love He's my boy. But Really? But, I mean. I think John Luke is a little bit more, like, if you were to draw a line between the two of them, between, like, more uh, serious bro and silly bro, I think John Luke is a little closer to serious, and I think uh, Luke is a little closer mm -hmm. to silly he, he came across as very like charming and self-aware um in his little like uh diary room type things like i i think he's probably there to have fun i think he's definitely showman to bait uh for sure um but i think he will be like he's sort of like a mix uh, usa between like kyle from last year and maybe Corey. like if you were to uh cory from whatever season nicole yeah. one yeah. uh like to draw a line between the two of them he's probably uh closer to kyle but that's probably like if you were to merge two big brother usa characters uh that's probably who would be but yeah i think he's uh um probably um gonna be fun to watch uh, he's pretty like you said drazian charming i think he like i would bet a strong wager on the fact that he ends up in a showmance with who i'm not sure um, but I think that's the likely outcome for Luke. 
He's my dark horse. I don't know what it is about this guy, man. There's something about him. He's just saying, yo, pick me. Uh, speaking of that, I have Cam. I like Cam as well. The guy with the, the neck, his head's always like that. Um, I like, like him. Harley. Like Harley, yeah. I like this guy, man. I like this guy a lot. Uh, Cam, he's uh, he's the only guy. Now, here's the thing. In all the DRs, and I, I, you know we're all guilty of it too when you're in the DR and you're in there. He's the only one. He's laid back. He's chill. Like uh, like Jesse Goddard's. That was he was always laid back and chilled in his DRs, you know. And, and this guy was just literally leaned back, just talking to the camera. He wasn't putting on a show. He was just kind of having a conversation with the with the camera. I like that. Um, he's a big fan of the show. This is my other favorite guy. So I think this is this is one of my my faves. He actually knows the show. He watches the show. He understands it. Watches the feeds. He's tried out for five or six years, something like that. So the guy. You know, he's a fan of the show. Now, I, I always say this. It doesn't matter if you're a super fan or not. You could be a super fan all you want. Sometimes it takes someone that's totally green to the show, comes in, doesn't watch it, comes in additions. Look at the Pax brothers. Don't even know what Big Brother is. They win their season. If they deserve it or not, whatever. doesn't matter. They still win. So being a super fan doesn't mean you're going to win or anything like that. Sometimes it works against you. Look at Frenchie. Another example right there. So, you know, being a super fan doesn't always mean you're going to do well. But I think this guy has that healthy balance. You can see he's calm, cool, collective. Maybe that's just right now. But I liked him. I liked his vibes. I liked his answers. I like his hair. I'm jealous of his hair. I'm, je- you know, I like, I liked him, man. I liked him. I liked his neck uh, curve. I liked it all, man. I, I, I don't know, man. I liked all of it. Uh, what are your thoughts on Cam the man? Uh, let's go, Jess again. Let's go, Jess. We'll bounce it back about Jess. What do you think of Cam the man? You know, I, I, I like him too. It's weird because just his very mere presence makes me laugh, but like in a good way. It's just really silly and i'm just trying to figure out bro are you serious or are you just uh <laughs> he's like high on life or something i like and i kind of i kind of really like that about him i what did i call him uh cameron garifanakis or yeah Galifianakis <laughs> Cause he, there. yeah because i thought he was just i i really do want him to just like go to one of the cameras and just start like talking about his day like in between two ferns like <laughs> seriously because he's he's just he he has his presence around him. It's just like really funny. I don't know if it's like if people are gonna feel the same way or just think like this guy's a little too weird. <laughs> that's the thing, um, right? You I'm, don't know how they're gonna be perceived in the house, right? That's that's another. Yeah, because you know? it's it's weird because like you have Red who is just like he looks like a people person. You have Luke who's going to be you know talking it up. You have these very. Um, prominent like social people and this dude looks like super chill calm says really weird things and it's funny to us because we're just watching him do his thing and then we're like okay we're warming up to him but we all know that it's very very different inside that Mm -hmm. house like like we know that this is these are 16 people that are probably the shit in their in their own right to the people in their world and Mm -hmm. they're they're so amazing to the outside world and then when you go inside there's this structure that automatically is like one's you know one's more social so the other person becomes less social or you know like some people fall back some people you know it's like a weird structure which is why i love seeing them inside the house and see their you know see them do their thing and i just look at cameron and i'm wondering he says all the right things uh i'm just really hoping that people take to him because it looks like he has a lot to offer that if he could stay long enough that we would really get a good show from him. And I like I like how you said that too because in a lot of these players, and that just goes not even these players, in, in every player, in, in their own day-to-day life, in their own circles, they might be the center of attention. They might be the, the, the leader of their circle or the leader of their group or just everyone always tells them, oh, you do well on Big Brother, you're so social. But when they get in that house, it's like, okay, now you're face-to-face with 15, 16, whatever it is other big personalities or other people that are the, maybe the, the key of their circle or whatever it is. And yeah, you're right. Sometimes people have to like find where they sit now. They're not the, the, the center of attention or whatever it is. They got to figure out, well, mm-hmm. where, where do I fit in now? Um, I, I like him. I, I hope he's not too standoffish. He doesn't really have that much like energy when he talked. He was very kind of just like monotone. Um, I hope, I hope he fits in. I like him. Pete, what do you think of our boy Cam, the man? I thought he uh, kind of reminded me, and this is not a great reference to make anymore, but Hyde from that 70s show. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, the hair and, yeah, yeah. The he, attitude. 
but, it, yeah, it's very laid back. Uh, uh, um, yeah, he, um, he might end up being like a, a wallflower type, maybe, if he's too relaxed. I don't know. I mean, he's like in the right like age range and he knows the show like or like or at least is familiar with the show mm-hmm. so like he should probably be fine like i i can't imagine you looking like look if i'm uh cory let's say and i look across the room i'm probably going to be intimidated by luke matt and hi sam uh, or if that, i'm not sure if that's the correct pronunciation of his name i'm probably not going to be intimidated by cameron so that adds a a a lot of value to Cameron actually because if he's a good listener and a pleasant person he's not going to be targeted based on it's very unlikely he'll be targeted based on his appearance uh, in the early stage of the game so that gives him some wiggle room to at least uh, probably you know a good two weeks or so to make those connections so so long as he does that he should be fine it's like you know so much of Big Brother is about first impressions, like you mentioned earlier with, with Risha. Like, if you stand out in the wrong way, it's a problem. Like, it, it, he's not going to be like, oh, he's super physically intimidating, mm-hmm. going to win all the competitions, we have to get rid of him. Or, you know, he doesn't come off as like a hyper-intellectual or something like that. So he should probably be a fine middle-of-the-pack player for the beginning. And so long as he, like, uh, gets some kind of an alliance early, like, there's no reason why someone like him should go... Um, in the early stages of the game but you know we again anything can happen but it's most likely you'll see Cameron for um for a while yeah I like I like him I I think he's gonna be around for a little bit uh as well and 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 that's I'm glad you said that too because I I always look at Big Brother the same way you got to look at who your physical threat is who your mental threat is who your social threat is and you got to that's that's your you know not everyone can be a social, uh, you know, beast or a comp beast or whatever it is. And you got to look at who your threats are. And I don't think people see him as a threat in those things. I think he's kind of like in the middle of the pack and all on all of them, which is which is where you want to be. Um, yeah, I like Cam. He's definitely one of my favorites. One hundred percent. I'm definitely cheering for him uh, for sure. I know we've forgotten a couple of people. Uh, there was the the biochemist. What's her name? I'm I'm sorry, I forget her name. The biochemist. She seemed Kirsten. like. Kirsten. What is it? Sorry. Kirsten. 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 Yeah. So. Uh, I got a little bit of of, uh, of recruit vibes on her. I don't think she watched the show yeah. very much. When they asked about, you know, Julie, she kind of gave the generic answer that she didn't know who Julie was, or maybe she watched an episode or two. Uh, being a recruit, not a bad thing. I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't, you know, it's something like that. But at least be knowledgeable of the show. You know, um, I don't think she's knowledgeable of the show, and I think it's going to show. I don't think she knows what it's going to be. You know, being in the house for a week, sure, two weeks gets tough. Three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. People and, and like she's she seems very successful, you know. Um, when you're in that house four, five, six weeks, whatever it is, it, it, it's not easy. Like you're you're really like you're out of your comfort zone, all that stuff. And and I don't know, I don't. I, and that's where to me, I think not having knowledge of the show, that's where people start cracking a lot, and that's usually when people start falling off. I don't know how well she does. I think she's like absolutely stunning. I think she's like just so beautiful. I think she's got a very good head on her shoulders. I think she's very, very smart. Do I think she's built for the show? That's a different story. Um, I, I think she, on a personal level, seems incredible. As a game player, I don't know if she knows what she's getting herself into. That's my my take on her. Uh, seems, like I said, very smart, very beautiful. Don't know if she knows what she's getting into. Uh, what are your thoughts on, uh, sorry, her name, Kirsten? Kirsten. Jess, let's hear it. Kirsten. I agree with you. I think, I think, um, yeah, easily. She's very, very stunning, very pretty, um, very smart, right? Um, so I feel like maybe she thinks she has it figured out and very, very confident. What's that, Pete? Um, Was she the 10th yeah? step girl? Yes. That that one got me when she said when they said what's your strategy she said, I'm going to be ten steps ahead how how do you say that like how do you know you're not even in the house how can you be ten steps ahead when you're like literally in your in your hotel room right now like anyway sorry go ahead Jess I don't want to yeah sorry I don't want to catch you up yeah that's that's yeah that yeah, got me that one that one, one got things, me it 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 comes off um I I want to say confident because I don't want to call her cocky I don't know her yet but right. you know it's 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 but it's very borderline. It's very, very borderline pretentious. So it's kind of 
um, and every right to be like, hey, you know, there's actually quite a, a few delusional people in the house or in the season, but that are just like very overly confident of what right. they can do. And I think that that can be one of the biggest problems in your game because yeah like you said like she's 10 steps ahead but what what are the steps i didn't know that big brother had 10 Uh you know had more than 10 steps like you know um so we'll we'll see i do like her attitude in terms of just like how determined she is um and she she looks like she's definitely that go-getter but the whole i'm gonna find the strongest people in the house i'm like oh my god she's gonna go into this house and she's not going to know what to do because there's not one person in that house where you're going to be like, that's the strongest person. Oh. And like, what? that's like, like optically, like Luke, like if Matt, if you're a strong, that's probably Jerry. Yeah. You know. She's going to, she's going to go for, for that. She's going to go for the Matt, the Luke, the Jared, um, and if that's the case, then I'm just like, Ugh, I don't know if I want to see that. Like, I want to see a, a good, a good mix of, you know, a good mix right. of people. Cause, but she, she's talking about steamrolling people. And I'm yeah. like, dude, like, okay, girl, like, I love the ambition. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 we'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm with I'm you on kind that. Of like, I feel I'm, I'm like, like I think she has the a great personality. Like I said, smart, beautiful, love, love the the person on the on a personal level seems phenomenal. I always talk on a game level. I never, I never make things personal. I always talk on a oh, game level, and and I just don't think she she you know I don't think she's cut out for. It. I don't think she she knows what she's getting into. Um, but yeah, like like the answers she was giving were just like those generic answers you give when you do. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna do like they're just the generic you know answers. Uh, she wasn't giving anything kind of extra, but you never know. I think she might go in and be likable, maybe find herself in the right group. Is she going to be making these like crazy, like, you know, Dan Giesling style plays? Probably not. Uh, but I think she can make it far. Like she can find the right alliance, make the right friendships, making the right connections. Uh, but I just I don't see the game player in her. And, and I, I hope she proves me wrong because I want to see her do yeah. well. I really do. I just, I personally cannot see it and I'm not going to sit here and try to make an, a, 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 an excuse for her to, I just don't see it. That's just me personally. No, uh, what do I you, agree with yeah. that. Cause I think, I think it's easy for you to, before you go into the house to say, I'm going to find the strongest people right. and not know that, Hey, you're in there for a hundred days. Like those strong people you might hate Exactly. by by week by week two like you so you just like found the strongest people and you realize that you can't even stand them you yeah. can't even trust half of them you know like i think that's a horrible right a horrible strategy right that's why when so, i heard those those answers it's like those are just generic answers that you know people are going to throw out there uh for sure p what do you think of uh kirsten well, I don't know what the hell a molecular biologist does, but she's a hell of a lot smarter than I am. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, she's definitely uh showman's bait for sure. Um, obviously she's beautiful. Um, look, showmances have a tendency to do pretty well in big brother. Uh, if she is single and if she finds herself in a showman's and she's obviously a, uh, an intelligent person, that's a pretty good recipe for someone to have longevity in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, uh, <laughs> I think it it depends on if she goes in there with the mindset that I'm the best and I'm going to, you know, manipulate everyone and everything is going to go my way all the time. You're setting yourself up for disaster, essentially. Um, but if she goes in there with the ability to... Um, at least, like, look, if she can do what she wants to do, the likelihood of success is probably high. The question is whether she's able to do it or not, basically. Um, anybody can win any competition at any time. People always, you know, you think of, like, her perception that I want to align with the strong people because she would think that, okay, strong equals high likelihood of winning. Right, but that you doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's not how it works. But it's not a bench-pressing competition every yep. week. Sometimes it's roll the ball through the right loop hoop or whatever. You don't know what these it's a B if yep. obviously if she's a molecular biologist, she probably has a pretty good memory. 
She's likely going to be good at the ABs. That gives her opportunity to win competitions. People that win competitions in the early stages of the game tend to be able to move the pieces around a little bit more fluidly and collect some allies. I mean, any good HOH in the early stages of the game, that's what you should be looking to do is collect allies. Um, so if she comes in with that mindset that, like, I'm going to win, I'm the best, uh, and wins an early competition, we might see her be able to create the plan that she's saying, and it all works out for her. Like, you know, this is a, these are possibilities. Anything can happen. Yep, I agree, I agree with that. I I, uh, I say it all the time as well. It's like people see the muscles and right away it's like, oh, that guy's got to go. He's a comp threat. Yes, I know they can win those physical comps, but there's so many crap shoots and like you said, A, Bs, roll a ball, put a ball, and it goes up a hill and bounces off these random pegs and it lands over. Like there's so many randoms. Yes, yeah, physical comps, you know, there's obviously those ones too where you got to hold on or whatever it is, but there's a lot of crap shoots too. So yeah, uh, I, you know, I think people throw the comps I think people have the wrong impression of comps for, for most of the thing. I, I don't know. I like her. I, I hope she does well. I just, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Again, we're going off these bios. We, we don't really know. Uh, who else is left? I think we have, was it Mira? Is that the last one left? Is it Mira? No. What, what was her name? Mikol. Mikol. That's what it is. Sorry. Mikol. Yes. Uh, Mikol. I think that's who we have left. Um, didn't get a lot from her. I, I got to be honest, we didn't see a lot. Even in the bios, she didn't give a lot. There were kind of short yeah, answers. Yeah, she's a politician. Politicians never give anyone anything. Yeah, she <laughs> very short answers. Didn't get, She's a politician. Yeah. Short answers didn't she's give a, a lot. She's a political, yeah. She's a political analyst. And uh, I think some people uh, of mine know, know of her. Oh. Okay. So, um, Is very... she a Republican? I... <laughs> You know, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I, I, I love that she's in politics. I love that she gives vague, politically uh, driven answers. I love that we don't know if she's on the left or, all, uh, or on the right. I think that's fascinating. I'm happy that <laughs> we don't even know. We don't even know if she's on the. They don't even know she's on the season. I'm next she's in the final right, two and she yeah. wins. Boom! See you later. See. All right, I'm picking her now. She's my third. That's it. Uh, no, I, I don't know enough about. Honestly, like I wish I. I don't even know what to say, man. I don't. There was not. She didn't give anything. Like there was no, nothing there. So it was like very one word answers. It didn't sound like she knew who Julie was either. Yeah, I would love to be able to give a breakdown of her, but I, I have no idea. I don't know what to say. I literally don't know what to say. So I don't know if you I guys. I know she's married. I know she's married, so she's gonna be out of the showman's. Well, there you uh, go. The showman's ring. Okay, well, that's she's the, that's, the that's all we know. Thing. What do you know? Uh, what do you want to say about her, Peter? I have no idea uh, about her whatsoever. Well, it's uh, I mean, if she's married, that means she won't get distracted, mm -hmm. uh, or it's very sure. unlikely to get distracted, which allows her to focus on the game. Uh, being in politics means that you have to be able to answer questions without answering them, and that's a pretty valuable skill in Big Brother. Mm -hmm. um, it might get tiring after a while, um, especially if you're attempting to align with her. So she has to be, like, she ha might have to turn her politics brain off sometimes because that's a great way to interact with your, like, um, non-allies or your enemies, but it's a bad way to act with uh, uh, to, to your allies. Um, at, you know, what is she, 30? So she's, you know, she's developed as a fully functioning person. She probably has a good handle on uh, her what she's capable of. Um, so, yeah, I think she could be um, uh, an interest. Like, I, I like that, um, you know, in the early season of Big Brother USA, what Julie would do all the time, and, like, the, the show would always make a point to be, like, to be like, oh, uh, here's so-and-so, the fill in the blank from wherever. Like they would do that all the time. Like here's Peter, the wrestling guy from Vancouver, British Columbia. Like they always made a point to factor in like what they did and where they were from as kind of like their framing of the person. Like, oh, will this factory worker get along with the, the you know, the pageant girl? Tune in to find out. Like they kind of, mm -hmm. like that was sort of a bit of how Big Brother was presented in its early years. It's... <clears throat> Excuse me. It's not how it's presented at all anymore. But I love the idea of like, oh, here's me, Cole, the political consultant from wherever. The, like, will she get along with the stay at home father? Like, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I like those contrast of uh, life experiences 
that we don't or like even if we do get them there's not really an emphasis on them in the show anymore which i find strange because big brother as a core concept is about bringing unique people from all over the country into this isolated environment and like will their prejudices or where their beliefs or w will their experiences clash or were they uh contrast or were they you know become compatible that if anything that they bring back and this like back to the future twist or whatever that's what i hope they bring back is a more uh, a stronger emphasis on the people and not of like watch these wacky crazy carnival games blah 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 like i hate all of that so um that was a weird tangent to get away from nicole the political consultant but um i like her i think she's great i i, I don't know enough about her i mean i'm sure she's great i just don't know enough about her so that one's a tough one to do. I want to talk. I think we only have one left. I think we only have one person left, which is Izzy. We'll break it down here. Uh, we'll wrap it up after Izzy. Um, again, man, like, here's the thing with Izzy. I, I know she's – there's – you love her, you hate her on Twitter. I see there's either you love her, you hate her. I try to avoid Twitter all day and everything because I don't want any spoilers. Um, what are her thoughts on Izzy? What do you think? Do you think – she says she's funny and outgoing and she's going to do this and that. What do we think? What do we think of Izzy? Uh, Jess, let's start with you. Yeah, I think we, we touched base on it a little bit when we were comparing, when we were talking about Blue, but um, I want to like, I mean, I don't dislike her. Um, I just think that it felt a little, a little, un, like a little forced in yeah. terms of her, the confidence that she was portraying. Like it was almost a little unnecessary. Like I know you, I know that they try to make you funny, like to be funny and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But it just like came off a little. Yeah, I, I a, also a little off putting. Yeah, and the fact yeah. that she's only started watching the show January in January, which is like a few months ago, and uh, and she's watched every season twice. That's a lot. That's a lot. So I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know enough. But um, we talked – oh, yeah, we did talk about her a bit, how she hasn't watched the feeds and stuff like that. So we did actually break her down a little bit. Um, I, I don't know, man. It's it's a lot to watch, and, and she has it recently in her head. But like Peter yeah. said before, you're watching the show back to back to back. You're not really getting the, the, the time frame. There's a lot of downtime in between. Um, I don't know. So, she yeah, gives we, me just – she gives me like – initial just vibes mm -hmm. from bb from, you know, from 10? 10 yeah yeah from 10 and um potential kira vibes you know like i feel like maybe she's about to bite off a little too much then she could chew like you like yeah everything's great and dandy when you just started watching big brother in january and watched you know yeah. every season twice you know for the past seven months but what were you doing in the me like what were you yeah. doing you a know lot of big brother. like um i think it's interesting like that she plays the flute like oh, she's yeah, talking she's like about playing people flutist. like her instrument and like it's it yeah. i think she might have some interesting things about her um i think she's gonna come into a very rude awakening going into the house and yeah. like depending on how people you know warm up warm up to her you know, because she kind of has this um, this vibe. I always it, it's it's a vibe. I always love when people you try to use a profession like it, it matters. Like I'm gonna play people like my flute. Uh, what, what, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how that, uh, you know. Uh, Pete, what are your thoughts on uh, on uh, Izzy? Yeah, I don't. Uh, I would my i don't think that izzy's winch trajectory is is high kind of has like joey van pelt vibes maybe um yeah yeah i don't know uh fun exuberant for sure um but i think might try be a little too much of a try hard hey like me type yeah in the house um which can be tricky um you know, like I, I thought part of uh, Izzy's bio and stuff was fun. Like I, you know, just seemed good, kind of funny. Uh, but I think in the house, uh, you know, like as a value proposition, when you're looking for potential alliance mates, is like, what do I think that I'm going to get out of Izzy as an ally? Right. Um, 
and beyond, you know, like maybe an entertaining person to be around or whatever, but like, especially again, in those early moments of the game, you know, like if she can find a, uh, like a foothold or whatever, totally different scenario. But again, in the, in the beginning, like if, if, if she's trying a little too hard, you know, kind of might, you know, be similar to blue maybe. Um, yeah, I, I just, I, I look, anybody can like, uh, Anybody can go far in Big Brother. Your duration of stay in the house is not necessarily reflective of skill. So we could fast right. forward seven weeks now and Izzy could still be in there and people would be like, well, see, she's awesome. But that's like, you can just exist and sort of like mm -hmm. not be evicted. But that doesn't, I mean, you're doing something right, obviously. But I mean, it just more or less means you're doing uh, there are more people doing things wrong than you, essentially. So, you know, like, we've seen a lot. Like, people can go, to, you can get to Final Five. Oh, yeah. Final Six. You could be in the end game. Uh, not to say that I think that Izzy will be there, but it's very possible that she'll be there. You know, but sometimes people conflate where you finish with how good you are at Big Brother. Right. And that's not, there's, there is obviously some crossover but it's not like a one-to-one -one. it's like well they got third they're obviously the best they're like you know whatever that's not necessarily true um 100%. that's just a little big brother the, yeah I, the way i, don't know. I the way i always see it too there's like different parts of the game the early game is hard to survive because everyone's kind of you know is a shooting range Middle of the game, the big players usually go. The people that are left in the end, it's usually a couple of the good players that survive, and they're dragging those people to the end that they know they're going to beat. That's where you're going to start dragging those characters that you, there's a point in the game where you got to take all the big targets. You keep the weak players. That's who you want to be playing against in the last HOHs at the end of the game, sitting beside them at the end. Boom, that's that's how you win the game. You don't want to be sitting beside the best player. You want to take I never understood this like – People say, oh, I, I want to bring the best to the end. I got to sit beside. If you beat the best person in week one, week six, week eight, or whatever, you beat them. Uh, yep, you yep. beat them. It doesn't I, matter. You don't have to sit beside them in the final two to beat them. If you beat them along the way, you beat them. That's that's it. So, um, yeah. So, a lot of times these, like, weaker players, they go and, and, and stay to the end. I I, uh, I want to – I think we talked – was that ever – did we talk – did we bring everybody up? Did you uh, talk we, about America? We have not talked oh, about my. America. Not talked about Riley, but one final point on Izzy. Oh, we not talked about Hi Sam either or Corey. Uh, Holy actually, shit! It's, there's a lot of people yeah. we didn't talk about. I thought we got them all. No, is there, uh, I don't even I don't even know who's uh, Riley. Who's uh? To uh, <laughs> you uh, keep on you keep on forgetting who Riley is, and it's the funniest Riley, thing that she's like the funny. only. She's yeah. like. <laughs> The only blonde blue eyes. Oh, girl the blonde there. one. Oh my god. <laughs> the bartender. I, I don't know the who that one, is. The only one probably available for a showman's. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Riley Showman's. Who's next? Who's the other one? Done. Riley. I'm sure she's uh, great. Okay. Which one? America. Oh, America. Oh man. Okay. Uh America. I I gotta say, I think she has the knowledge of the game, not the personality for it. I think she's going to be annoying. I think she's going to be – she's too – like, she just – she moves too much. It would freak – it would just freak me out in the house, man. Like, stay – like, she's too much, man. Like, all of a sudden, her arm's over here and her other arm's over there. And, like, what? You know, just chill, you know? I don't I know, man. you said you like people talking with their hands. I like when they talk with their hands over here, man. I don't want one hand over here and the other hand reaching around, you know, tickling the back of my head or something, man. You know, I just – I like your hands in front where I can see you. She was – one minute she's over here. Is that what you just said? What's that? Sorry? No, don't reach around. Reach around? Well, I mean, a reach around's fine, but you know, it just—I'm telling you, man. It's she just—I don't know. There's, she was too too movie, man. It was too much of like this, and I don't know, man. It was too much for me. America, I'm sure she understands the game. Uh, too 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 much movement, man. I, I like movement, but that's too much. Okay, maybe I don't know. America, too much movement. Okay, who's left? Riley, America. <laughs> Who else? I think Corey. America has. I think America has something. I think okay, she does. See. I think she has the knowledge. I think she has the knowledge. I would hope to see that she redeems. Uh, she she gives me kind of a little Paloma vibes a little bit, but I'm hoping oh, the good sense. ones, like to the point yeah. where she becomes a little bit more redeemable. Like she looks like she's talkative and she knows what she's talking about. I just really hope she doesn't like 
take take over everything to where, like you said, people start to find her annoying. I think uh, I think she's an early boot. I do. I do. I think she's. An, I don't know where she fits. I always, you know, we talked about earlier. Where do people fit? Maybe she does fit in. I, I don't know. I just I see her as an early boot. I think I see her talking too much, saying too much, uh, just not not being able to stay quiet. I I, I see America going early. Your Personally. indictment of the American Ivy League system is atrocious, Bruno. I for <laughs> one am frankly insulted that you would disparage such a. <laughs> time tested <laughs> institute that has given us the, the the greatest minds in america's history yes i mean you know it is what it is i i mean look i look i don't i i couldn't get into an ivy league university if i had all of the money in the world so i think it's pretty impressive that she went i don't know which one she went to but, but regardless I, I gotta say i gotta i gotta catch you off there there's two there's there's book smarts and there's street smarts. My brother, one of my brothers is a, a fucking genius, okay? But the guy couldn't survive in the streets for the life of him. He, he, the guy if he right. was in Big Brother, he'd be so just useless. Useless. Yep. It, it's there's so there's different things between book smarts and street smarts. I luckily got the street smarts. I didn't get the book smarts. He got but you know, that's the way it is. So you could be Ivy League, you could be whatever, you could be Albert Einstein, you jump in that house, you could be the most awkward person and just not fit in. I mean, smarts, you know, reading, be able to read a, a, a paragraph or a book. I mean, what is that going to do for you in the house? I get, I don't yeah. want to like downplay her smarts. I'm sure she's very smart, yeah. but there's a big difference between book smarts. The and chat, smarts. the chat just said that you hate America, so we get it. Wait. We get it. You know? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, but Bruno. it's the truth. Like street smarts all day, man. Like uh huh. Especially in this game of Big Brother, you can be as smart as you want. That's not gonna bring you anywhere in this house. I mean, maybe it brings you something, but uh, you know, it is what it is. By the way, Jen, what's up, fam? I see you. Just give me one minute, all right? I see you, fam. But yeah, it's uh, it's you know, it it is uh, it, it is the way it is. That's what I see. Maybe sorry, Pete. Keep going. I want to cut you off about the Ivy League uh thing. I, I but she's also she's very attractive. She's showman bait. Um. And like, if you're bubbly fun girl, you know, bubbly fun girls usually do pretty okay at Big Brother. So I would not be surprised. I think the Paloma comparison is interesting, actually. But Paloma was the best character on that show until she left. So mm -hmm. I don't think America would fall into that category. But I, uh, I, I would predict that she's not as uh, muppety as you think, and she'll probably be much more demure in there if i had to guess I, first I three think boot she, first I think three just, i agree i think she's just very excited i mean she's a, a bb fan so she's yeah. first just, three you know, i'm giving her first three weeks she's out of the house see you later gone uh, a huge prediction yeah i say first three weeks she's she's on the bench she's uh we're talking to her uh, on twitter three <laughs> weeks i give her and that's i being. i was gonna say i was gonna say one to two but i'll, I'll say three three weeks she's gone uh who else is left who was the other one we said Corey is the Corey. Who's Corey? He's the last. Oh, and Bowie, actually. We have not talked about Bowie. Who's Bowie? Who's Co Corey and who's <laughs> oh Bowie? My God. <laughs> hey, He's like, who is who is anybody really? Created a great point inadvertently, Bruno. Okay. So you just last fucking three hours <laughs> watching the videos <laughs> and talking. Like you watched all of their bios, you watched mm -hmm. their the uh, TikTok things like you, you you basically got to know them as good as we can possibly get to know them pretty much and, uh, yeah are there people that stood out there are people that obviously didn't stand out i didn't even and know so, there was a a cory on the show <laughs> right yeah and yeah. So, you know like that gives you that should give people a little bit of insight that when you're in the house like just like okay yeah that guy like i okay i know i want to align with him sorry who was that person like is it like that that like the first like four days in the house is that and so if you really 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 stand out and you have a lot to say about this person and it's negative you could be screwed you kind of want to be forgotten about to a certain degree although perhaps not to the extent of uh, Corey and bowie but like that's how like it's 16 people you got to remember 15 names and faces you in your your mind can only do so much and it's funny that even after a few hours you've already forgotten some of them uh, okay so Corey is zach's brother that's the survivor guy. okay he okay 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 he was funny like him. 
He was funny. He was he was he was cooking. He was funny a little bit. He was he was I, at first I was like, yo, this guy. I still don't know. I still don't know how far he goes, man. I don't know how far the humor gets him. I, I don't know. I I like him. Uh, I he did cook, man. He did cook. I like him, but it took a bit for him to warm up to me, and I still forgot who he was. the The comedy, I think, it's funny. I I, I don't know how far it's gonna get him in the house, though, man. I, I don't know. He's I don't know. Young, he is. He's, he's twenty one. Twenty one years old. His brother did not do good on Survivor, did he? No, he was his second boot. Actually, yeah. first first evicted, but second boot. Right. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I don't. Uh, I, I don't know. He's funny and stuff, but how far does he go? I, I don't know. I guess they only get you so far. Like, look at. Uh, I'll use Emily as uh, season five. She was hilarious on my season, but what did that do for her? Like, absolutely nothing. So I don't know. I have. I don't have high hopes for this guy. I don't know. What do you guys think, Jess? What do you think about this guy? I mean, I'm sure he's a super nice guy, and I don't want to. You know, I, I think I, I love people with. You know, I, I like to laugh. I like to make people laugh. I like the comedy side of people, but I just don't know what it brings. I didn't get anything in there. I still. I don't think. I don't know. I don't know. He cooked, yeah. but he didn't cook enough. You know. What do you got? I. Um. It's a very. It's very interesting to watch. Uh, Gen. Uh. Gen Zs at work. Like I. It, I'm still trying to kind of get them. It, it, like. Uh, he seems very overly confident but it's also very charming in a way like like you said you have to kind of watch him he can mm. be funny and i think like i would like him in real life like i think he'd be but i don't know like how right. well he would put in in the in a house full of you know 30 40s you know right. um it and especially yeah, he gave me Kevin Jacob vibes without giving me Kevin Jacob vibes. Like, like he he's kind of trying to be that you know manipulator. Uh, he's trying to be you know the sneaky guy, and he thinks he's gonna get there. But I just don't think he has enough experience to actually get the desired result. Right, right. I, I agree. I think I think I don't. I just don't see him getting it, man. I don't see him doing what he wants to do or. I don't know, man. I, I wish, I wish I had better. Like, I like the comedy. I think in real life, I think this guy's gonna be awesome. I just don't know if he has it for for the show. Just like I said about, uh, I think it was Curse. And I think in the real world, they're amazing. Uh, he'd be one of the guys I'd want to hang out with. You know, he's funny. He's, you know, I like that kind of personality. But it's just, I don't know if he's built for the show. Pete, what do you think about uh, Corey? Um, look, Ian had a hard time assimilating in his season. Mm -hmm. Cameron went first and was devastated about it. Uh, those are the two opposite ends for, like, if Corey had glasses, he would basically fall into that kind of uh, archetype, I would think. He is really funny, and uh, funny usually works in the early portion of the game um, because you need levity to take your mind off of the fact that you are locked in a box. <laughs> so him being kind of uh, self of like, I'll give you an example. Uh, so Andrew Monahan from uh, my season, he was the older guy, uh, you know, I think he was late thirties uh, when he played, but, and a big part of Andrew's game was he's really funny. He's entertaining to be around. He's self deprecating. He's constantly, you know, um, poking at himself. So, Andrew just being a good roommate, essentially, like he made the days go by faster because he, you, everything that he said, you would laugh at. So funny can work in Big Brother to get you through. Um, like, why would you not align with Corey? Like, I mean, what, like, he doesn't have any obvious detriments, you know, oh, if he's like snaky and sneaky and he's trying to do too much, okay, then maybe. But if he's just kind of a nice guy that you can have a chat with and he'll make you laugh and you can form a friendship that way, yeah, I can see him doing fine. Um, his youth will probably, um, like, because he is the youngest, there are a lot of people, like, within, like, you know, 24, a bunch of 25s, you know, that he'll probably be fine with. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think he will probably do better than his brother would be my prediction. <laughs> I don't think that would be too hard. I think he's young, yeah. man. 20, 21 is so young. I, I still think that's yeah. too young to be playing these. Um, you know, they're, they're just too young, man. They haven't had exp – I don't know. I, I personally think that's too young to play these games. I was 31 the first time I played, and I was – I mean, that was – I was seen as the old guy, man, at 31, which was crazy to me, yeah. um, which was nuts, man, which was nuts. I don't know. 21 is young. So – 
let's do some final thoughts here. Uh, we did go through the, the whole cast. Uh, I want to know if you had to pick one person. Who would it be? Uh, one pick. That's all you get. Uh, Jess, who's your one pick? Uh, my... Blue. <laughs> God dang. <laughs> um, I'm going to say um, 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 Matt. Oh, good pick. Good pick. That's like my fourth or eighth. It's <laughs> like eighth. It's like my eighth. It's a good pick. It's a good pick. Halfway through the cast for Bruno. Yeah, yeah. We should uh, we should gamble a little bit on this. One. Uh, no, good pick. Uh, Matt is a good, very good pick. Actually, no, he is he is in my top three. See, I have six that I want to pick. I have six, and it's like hard for me to pick one, and Matt oh, is I one mean, of them. But I, uh, he's, he's one of a few. So, but that's just the one that I'm just gonna go with now. Yeah, he's very very good pick. I, I think he's a good pick. What about you, Pete? What do you what do you think? Uh, you know what? I'm going to go with, uh, me Cole. I think that's going to be, that's going to be my, whoa, pick. Oh, that was the, okay. Uh, be, okay. You know, I was joking when I said, I was uh, Matt was like eight. Me Cole's like probably 15th on my list. <laughs> <laughs> like there's not many people below her. Um, I would love to make a wager on all of this. Wow. I, I, I love, I'm, I'm very interested in like, um, culture as it relates to politics especially in the united states and especially right now so i think i'm you know she's not a politician she's a political consultant that's obviously different but she's in that world so to me that's very interesting like i'm i'm it's compelling to see how someone who's uh what it, yeah 30 who's grown up in the as we've seen significant change in in not only like culture but big brother culture through the years, like to me, that's like maybe I'm overemphasizing the political consultant element of her personality, but like for whatever reason, that to me is interesting, and so that makes me want to watch her socially navigate the field. Very interesting. I I would I was a little bit surprised on that. One. It was good. Yeah, but that's probably like my 14th pick. Okay, so for me, I this is tough, man. I love Jag, I love Cam, Felicia, Luke, Red, Matt. Like I have no I have to pick one. Uh if I were to pick one, and I mine's kind of a little wild too, because I don't know. I just I'm gonna throw it out there. I'm gonna say Luke. I'm going with Luke. I don't even know why, man. Like Luke is probably like, yeah, Luke. Luke's my guy. I'm sticking to it. That's wow. it. Luke. Luke's my guy. This is interesting. Luke's I just my guy. Say that, um, you know, you um, statistically have the worst picks. Whoa! When when you when you pick people, who did I pick but on BB Can Eleven? To, I picked. Um, uh, you picked Zach, and he was like, okay. he was didn't even make jury. But I picked Zach because I I just I you know. I picked. I and didn't pick wait, Zach to win. Said, and then you said, and then you said Kevin Jacobs. Would, there was no way in hell he was going to win. That is true. That is true. Who who did I know? But I picked, the, and, you, uh, and I then you the said winner. there was who no won way it? in who hell that who Daniel won? last year. Then you said there was no way in hell that Daniel was going to get further than first boot, and he made it to second. Listen, Daniel. We talked, but we explained what what happens. How certain people get to the end. Stop. Uh. You know, I, listen. I don't want to bring it up, but. <laughs> some people get to the end some ways. Some people get to the end other ways. You know, uh, who did I pick the winner? Who was the winner? What's his name? Who won? Uh, Ty. Ty. Yeah. I picked Ty. I picked Ty. Jonathan. I mean, uh, yeah, you know what? I'm done. Never mind. I picked, but I did pick Ty. I did pick Ty. Uh, all right. That was, uh, I just want to say, uh, you guys, you guys were awesome. I really want to, I really want to say thank you for sitting down. Uh, guys, we are live on kick and Twitch right now, both streams and, uh, Jess and Pete came on. They've been hanging out, chatting some big brother. We're going to be streaming every single episode of BB 25 over on kick. So once that starts on Wednesday, come on by, watch the episodes together with the crew. It's going to be fun. Uh, you guys are awesome. I want to say thank you again, guys for, um, from coming on and chat. I know it's like, it's one 30 in the morning here. Uh, I think it's the same for you, Jess. It's like only 11 for Pete. So he's, he's fine. He's like, yo, man, this is, this is fine. Uh, You're going to have a full night's sleep. Pete. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's late for us. But yeah, Wednesday is, is the first episode Wednesday. Uh, so we'll be watching that here as well. And you guys are always, uh, you know, welcome. And what we were doing for BB Can was after the episodes, people would jump on like Jess and or Emmett or whoever, Kiefer, we'd all chat and stuff. So if you guys want to do that, uh, you can do that as well. You know, you're always invited. Uh, all right. So I, I, and listen, I like Jag. Jag is, Jag is, is probably my favorite. Uh, but you know, like I was saying earlier, like we were discussing earlier, I think Jag is going to be too liked, and 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 that's going to work against him. I think he's got the right tools and and everything. I I would pick Jag to win. I just think he's going to be too well liked, and he's going to get pulled back. So yeah, we're live on uh, on Kick as well. Most people are on Kick, I believe, but we're live on Twitch and Kick, and it's really good to see everybody. And and thank you guys for hanging out. And Pete, Jess, thank you guys so much. I love you guys. I appreciate. It. I'm going to hang up the call. I'm going to chat to the chat. I owe some people some thank yous in the chat. Jen, I see you. Don't go too far. And uh, one crazy devil, don't go too far. I want to talk to you guys uh, as well and everybody else in the chat. All right, guys, I'm going to hang up the chat. I want to say thank you very much for everything you do. Uh, you guys were awesome. Have a great night. Thank you. Jess, Pete, have a good night.